Nineveh, as I told you before, was the largest city of the ancient world. Absolutely, hands down, the biggest group of individuals living in one place ever assembled in the ancient world. Nineveh was the storehouse of the wealth of the world. You, you all know about the splendors of Egypt, you know, the pyramids and King Tut and all that. In the, the Assyrian Empire went down during the time of this book and, and struck Egypt mortally and carried back in one load 90 tons of solid gold. In one load. That they recorded. They, they used to weigh it. They used to be proud of how much. And in one load from Egypt, they took 90 tons. They struck Israel and carried them off. They struck the Syrians and carried off their stuff. They struck all the ancient kingdoms and they brought it into Nineveh. And Nineveh was just a vast, seething, very, very luxurious metropolis. The Assyrian monarch, who might have been checked by God in 701 B.C., we saw before, Remember Sennacherib, who had 185,000 soldiers killed by the angel of the Lord, went home, but it still was great days for Nineveh. Even though he lost 185,000 soldiers, Sennacherib more than doubled the city's size of Nineveh. And it's not in your notes. You can just listen, okay? I don't have room to put all this. Um, the inner wall, as I told you, with Jonah was eight miles in circumference. It was 100 feet high. It was so wide, three chariots could race around it side by side. It had 1,200 towers. It had 14 gates. Beyond that was an even wider city, the suburbs of what we would call it. And the suburbs, according to Jonah's eyewitness experience in the book of Jonah, chapter 3, verse 3, it says it took him three days to walk from one end of Nineveh to the other. That's a big city. There aren't very many cities like that, even in the world today. Sennacherib's palace, that was the king of this place, was called the Palace with No Rival. It was of cedar, cypress, and alabaster, gigantic lions of bronze, bulls of pure white marble lined the entrance. Its great hall, where he would have people come to sit in front of his throne, measured 40 by 150 feet. His armory, where he kept his chariots, his armor, his horses, his weapons, and other equipment, covered 46 acres, and it took his workmen six years just to build where he put his war gear. And yet, what a magnificent city this was, but so wicked and with what cruelty and violence it was constructed. Nineveh grew rich at the expense of the nations she plundered. Listen to what a 19th century uh, uh, commentator, Walter Meyer, a Lutheran fellow, very uh, good commentator, wrote, To Nineveh came the distant chieftains who kissed the royal feet, the rebel leaders who were paraded, fettered with iron, distant and deceitful kings tied with a dog chain around their neck, and made to live in dog kennels in front of the king's throne. By the way, he used to have this peculiar uh, twist in him. He'd put these people in the dog kennel, and then he'd go out and get human waste, and he would dump it on top of them as they were in this cage, and just watch them get sick and miserable. And that's how cruel and how hideous they were. To Nineveh were sent gifts of far-off tribute. Heads of vanquished enemies were brought back, held up as signs of victory. Crown princes were brought as hostages. Beautiful princesses as concubines. In Nineveh, rulers who experienced rare mercy carried brick and mortar for building operations. If you were captured over in India or the Caucasus Mountains or, or somewhere up in the Ural Mountains up into Europe, uh, on the border between Europe and Asia, if you were had mercifully treated, you would spend your life and die at the brick mill. But if you weren't mercifully treated, you would be given the cruelest of torture. The capital of crushing tyranny of the ancient world, the concentrated center of evil was the city of Nineveh against which the prophet thunders his divine denunciations. Before the beginning of the 7th century in Sennacherib's reign, other cities had royal residence. Kelna, Asher, Dershaker, but Sennacherib chose Nineveh as his capital. It became the metropolis of the world. It became the source of unmeasured woe for Judah as for other far greater nations. That's what Meyer wrote. What a fitting description. But the great city, Nineveh, had existed from almost the beginning of time, and under Sennacherib it rose to unparalleled strength and splendor, but it would end. Ninety years after Sennacherib parked his army outside Jerusalem, and Isaiah the prophet and Micah preached and a revival occurred inside the walls, and God killed the Assyrian army outside the walls just ninety years from that moment. Nineveh, the largest city in the world, was overthrown so completely it was never inhabited again. 
And when Alexander the Great, a few generations later, came looking for Nineveh, he couldn't find the city in four, the 4th century B.C. In fact, no one found the city until 1840, and it was a source of immeasurable criticism against the Bible, which said it was a false reference until the year 1840 when they found a city that they could not find the perimeter of for years as they excavated until finally they found the total design of this massive city.